Hey, good afternoon, everybody. So it's Teresa here with the Intentional Classroom, and today is webinar day for me. So I decided while I had some makeup on my face, I should record a video for you guys too, because the more resources you have, the more likely you're gonna succeed at your state board and as an actual professional stylist, really understand what you're doing. So today I decided to tackle acid versus alkaline because I feel like it's something most people don't truly understand. They know alkaline is a little bit stronger, but when it comes down to a state board, they're unable to identify the differences. So it's a quick explanation of the differences between the two, okay? So as always, if you like what I'm doing, if you like what the Intentional Classroom is doing, don't forget to follow and subscribe and like and share and really, really kind of become part of this community that we're trying to create. If you don't know who we are, I am a licensed cosmetologist who also is about to have my doctorate in education. And so I've kind of taken those two worlds as a stylist and as an educator and brought them together to really try to create resources for students and teachers that really help you succeed, okay? So again, if you like what I'm doing, please click subscribe, go ahead and do it because I'm really trying to get my audience up there so that I can help more people. It's really what it comes down to, okay? So why do we need more than one type of perm? Why though, right? Perms kind of suck as it is, right? Nobody really loves doing them. You know, it's, I hate to say that they're outdated because they are back, my friends. If you like it or not, perms are a thing. It's not just the old lady perm that we did when we were in hair school. So why do we need to know about it? Well, it's relevant. It's money in your pocket by being able to do them. Understanding the difference between the two could make or break literally someone's hair, okay? So this is why we have to know it. This is why we need multiple types. There's lots of different types of hair out there, okay? So four terms that you need to know, you absolutely need to know to pass a state board and to succeed as a stylist in this industry are acid perm, alkaline perm, exothermic perm, and endothermic perm. So we're going to do a really quick rundown. I'm going to try to include some audio here. So let's see. We're going to be a little bit different today and see how this goes. So we're going to start with an acid perm, and I'm going to play this song for you, and we're going to see what it makes you feel like, okay? Listen to the music. I'm also a musician, if you don't know, so everything comes back to music for me. All right, so the music, it's slow. There's no real beat to it, right? It's very soft moving. It doesn't really have a sense of urgency to it, right? So really take a second and think about it. I also happen to love this song. You can play it on the piano. It's amazing. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna lower that down and we're gonna talk about what the heck am I trying to achieve here, right? That piece of music and this image truly describes an acid perm for you, okay? So let's talk about some of the facts of an acid perm. An acid perm has a pH of 6.9 to 7.2. So you can see it's just below neutral and it's very, very close to home base of your hair, which is 4.5 to 5.5, right? It's best used for highlighted or fragile hair. You, you heard that music, right? It's soft. There is no driving beat to it. It just kind of takes its time and does what it needs to do. The main ingredient is glycerol monothioglycolate, something you do not have to be able to pronounce. However, you need to recognize on a test that this is typically the main ingredient of an acid perm, okay? Slow moving and gentle, like I mentioned, just like that music was, very slow, very just kind of peaceful. That's kind of what an acid perm does is it's not shaking up the hair all too much. Typically, an acid perm does need heat of some sort because without those strong chemicals, without all of that push, it needs a little help, okay? It also typically has a longer processing time. So one more time, here's your acid perm, just so that you guys know what that sounds like know how it's moving through the hair, okay? Awesome, come on. Creepy, loving, amazing song, okay. Okay, so we're gonna keep moving. <laughs> now let's talk about an alkaline perm. I could not not include this. I mean, because when I was looking for like rave gifts and I saw this, I thought this has to happen. This actually has to happen. All right, are you ready for some more music? So this is the music that truly can identify with an alkaline perm. <laughs> This is Lindsay Sterling, so if you love Lindsay Sterling, I clearly don't have the rights to this music, guys, but I want you to hear what that beat looks like, what it sounds like. An alkaline perm is going to have a lot of push to it. It's going to have a lot of movement to it. It really is going to work hard to do what it needs to do. Okay. Probably going to 
in trouble for using the music. I don't even know. All right, so let's keep going. Few facts about the alkaline perm. All right, swells open the cuticle, okay? It's got much stronger pH, which means it has ammonia in it and it really is going to open up the cuticle for you, okay? Which also means it's best for resistant hair. So we choose alkaline when somebody has coarser hair, when they have virgin hair, when they have super straight hair, you know, hair that really might be difficult to actually change, okay? So pH of eight to 9.5, all right? Main ingredient, Think it's going to come up here in a second is ammonia it's got ammonia in it okay so it needs minimum tension that push that strength that comes with an alkaline perm means you don't have to pull real tight and in fact if you do you could break the hair right if you have super tight rubber bands on your perm rods it could actually break the hair okay typically does not need outside heat of any sort okay so typically it just goes at room temperature it it processes until it's done and that's it okay main ingredient there we go is ammonium thioglycolate okay again if you've ever watched the movie Legally Blonde, she talks about the ammonium thioglycolate in the hair and how it had to be deactivated and that's how her hair was so curly. And I mean, honestly, like it is a term that you'll hear out there. You don't have to be able to say it, but you need to recognize that ammonium thioglycolate is the main ingredient for an alkaline harm, okay? I'm gonna try to play this music one more time. I just, as I'm doing this, realize I'm like, I might not be getting away with the music thing, but we're gonna find out. There's your alkaline perm. It has some push, it has some beat, it has some movement, okay? Okay, so there's two more terms that you really need to know as you're studying for your state boards for perms, okay? And they are exothermic and endothermic. So here's some of the differences between the two. An exothermic perm does not need an external heat source. So most of your alkaline perms are exothermic perms. You can wrap, uh, you know, a perm, use an exothermic, um, if I could get it out, waving solution of some sort, and their client can sit at room temperature. Whereas an endothermic perm, does need a heat source. Endothermic perms are typically acid. They're not nearly as strong. They usually cannot process at room temperature. They usually have to go into the dryer, like under the dryer. So I will never forget my cosmetology teacher saying to me, Teresa, endothermic goes into dryer. And I have said that every time I've taught this chapter for 20 years, endothermic goes into dryer, okay? So the exothermic perm tends to have a stronger pH, stronger chemicals, while the endothermic perm is much less damaging it has much softer chemicals, okay? Exothermic perm is usually alkaline and endothermic perm is usually acid. Now, here's the thing. I say usually because as chemistry evolves and we make better chemicals, these things can possibly change. I have seen alkaline perms that are endothermic. I've seen acid perms that are exothermic. So don't get caught up on that. It's always alkaline. It's not. But you do have to remember that an exothermic perm processes at room temperature. It creates its own heat within the chemicals. And an endothermic perm does not. An endothermic perm literally just you have to put it under the dryer. It's not going to achieve what you need to achieve, okay? So that's what I have for you today, guys. I hope this helped. Please don't forget to share. Please don't forget to subscribe. I'm trying to produce as many videos as I can to make sure you have all of the tools and resources you need. Also share this with your instructors because there's a whole second playlist that is all teaching methodology so that hopefully I can give some teachers some hints and tips on really how to engage students, okay? So thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to get, you know, to get my next video out there for you guys. Have a great day.